Present. Councilman Genzel? Present. Councilman Keating? Present. Councilman Boardway? Absent. Supervisor Ballo? Here. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. At this time, I have read and detect no errors or omissions, so I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Genzel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Battle? Yes. Gary? Item number two is the consideration of all fund bills. Councilman Keating? Yes, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, I've had an opportunity to review all the bills. Um, the, the total bills on the abstract uh, tonight total $174,660.67. Uh, however, there is one uh, invoice that's on there for a vendor. Uh, they have a few things that they have left to wrap up, so I, I'm uh, omitting that particular payment until the job is complete. So uh, that total would be $6,700 that will not be paid until the next meeting, uh, taking the total to $100. $67,960.67, and I make a motion to pay that dollar amount. Second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Genzel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Yes. Carried. Item number three is correspondence. We have correspondence, a thank you letter to the Parks Department. Thank you so very much for the wonderful <laughs> job that you're all doing every day. The Boston Town Park is the cleanest and most well-kept park in Western New York. Um, from Jim, Jim and Debbie Rausch, Rausch. So, Bob, Tom Scottman, great job. They do a great job. Good. Item number four is the new business. 
is the 2018 preliminary budget. The preliminary budget was uh, received October 4, 2017, and we will be setting a date for public hearing for October 1st, oh, I'm sorry, November 1st, um, for the public hearing on that. So I make a motion to accept the 2018 preliminary budget and set a public hearing for November 1st, uh, 2017, located at Boston State, Boston Town Hall, Boston State Grove, if you could publish that. Yes. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Gensel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Taylor? Yes. Next, we have an application for use of town facility for Boston Youth Soccer League. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. What we have here tonight is a request for the use of town meeting facility by Boston Youth Soccer League. Uh, represented by Nicole Rooney, the president. Uh, what they're requesting here is the town hall community room without the kitchen. Uh, they, they requested would be um, October 17th of this year, time is 6.30. Type of event is the end of the year meeting for soccer. Uh, they predict about 25 attendees. Uh, I see no issues with this application. Our town clerk has told us that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that date is available. So I make a motion to allow this meeting to happen. Second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Gensel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Gordon? Supervisor Bailey? It's Sarah. fine. Gary? <laughs> yes. Uh, next we have uh, approval for Recreation Director Anthony Zenick to attend a New York State conference located in Syracuse. Uh, what we have here tonight is our Recreation di um, Director, Anthony Zenick, has requested to, uh, to attend the 80th Annual Conference in Turn and Stone Convention Center, November 15th through the 18th. Um, this is put on for the New York State uh, people that are head of uh, recreation. This has many, many excellent um, talks that Tony will certainly uh, benefit from and also will uh, our town if he attends this meeting. So I would like to make a motion to allow our Recreation uh, Director Tony Zenick to attend this meeting. Uh, he has broken it down um, to a value of $629. Uh, I make a motion that these expenses be paid to allow the Recreation Director to attend. I'll second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Gensel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Ballard? Yes. Next, we have application for use of facilities for children's Halloween party. Uh, Mrs. Moore, Councilman. Yes, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Indeed, we do have an application for the use of facility for the Town of Boston Halloween Children's Party uh, presented to us by Barbara Moore. Uh, they are requesting uh, October the 27th between 4 and 10 for the party. Uh, should be torn down by 9 o'clock. They are requesting the community hall with the kitchen. Uh, they will not be serving alcohol. It is not a private party, and uh, it, they say it's not a public special event. It has been signed, and I have been told the date is available. Uh, so I would like to make a motion to approve this use of facility. I'll second it. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Gensel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Ballard? Yes. Next, we have application for use of facilities for Boston Croppers. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Again, we have another uh, application for use of facility by the Boston Croppers. Uh, we have an attached list of dates requested. If anybody would like to see them all, uh, I have them up front for your viewing pleasure. Um, they will be scrapbooking uh, in the town hall uh, community room. They would like to use the kitchen. They will not be serving alcohol. They are not going to be a private party. It is not a public special event. Signed, and I have been uh, confirmed that the dates are all available in 2018. Uh, I would like to make a motion to approve for the Boston Crappers. 
Second that. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Gensel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Dale? Yeah. Yes. Carried. Next, we have Highway Department Storage Building. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. What we have here um, is the Highway Department Storage Building bid. Uh, the Highway Superintendent TLAC has requested that a uh, structure be built, uh, I believe, for cold storage of some equipment. Uh, we'd like to get that stuff inside, obviously, to protect it from the elements. Um, and our uh, town engineer has put together a project manual. Um, this project comes within the higher threshold of our procurement procedure which needs to be put out for um, advertisement within the paper to solicit bids uh, for this building. I would uh, make a motion to authorize the town clerk to um, advertise this um, bid in the local paper. Um, and that we would uh, go by Jim's project manual and that people can pick up things in your office, um, plans, so that they can put their bid together. I will second that. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Gensel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Battle? Yes. Here. Item number seven and eight actually are going together under new business. Councilman. Yes, thank you, Supervisor. So what we have here is a, uh, a notice for bids. Uh, the town is looking, or the highway department is looking to pick up a 2018 three quarter ton four wheel drive double cab pickup truck. Um, we're going to be uh, obtaining bids uh, at the town clerk, uh, clerk's office Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and then there's also a bid for trade uh, for one used 2015 three quarter ton four wheel drive Chevy pickup truck. Um, all of the bids are going to be at the town clerk's office, my town clerk will be publishing the paper, and I make a motion to approve the 2018 pickup truck bid and also the 2015 Chevy pickup trade in bid. I will second that. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Gensel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Babel? Yes. Item yes. number nine it's John Deere Crow Quote Protractor. Under our last inspection from state. I think the insurance company actually came in. Um, our two lawnmower tractors don't have rollover bars. It's required now to have rollover bars on them. Um, so, uh, Mr. Tlack, being the Parks Department Director, um, got quotes for him um, to replace the tractor with a new one, bringing us up to code. Um, but we are, we decided on where you're going to put, because what they were offering us on a trade-in, we think we can do better and put it out to auction. So we're going to hold off buying the new one until we sell the first one. Uh, we're going to put it up to auction with, instead that they wanted to give us $2,700. Mr. T. I've seen, seen one go on there for $3,800. We think we can do better. So we are going to put it up onto the auction site it's called Auctions International. Auctions International. So I make a motion to the Parks Department Director, Mr. Tlack, put the John Deere X74 ULT turf two wheel S up for auction with a minimal <coughs> minimal bid at the time of set of $3,000. I'll second that. Yes. Yes. Councilman Yes. Item number 10, application for use of facility. Councilman Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, indeed, we have another application for the use of facility. This one presented by the Boston Historical Society, Kathy Pajaklo acting as president. Um, we have two dates on this uh, request, one for November 14th, 2017, one for April 17th. 2018. The one in November is for their board meeting. The one in April of 18 is for their um, April potluck dinner. Um, the event on November 14th, they're only requesting the community room. The event in April 17th of 18, uh, they are requesting 
the community room and the kitchen. Um, they are not having uh, serving any alcohol. They are not having a private party. It is a public special event, uh, especially in regards to the follow-up dinner. Uh, and the dates are available, so I would like to make a motion to approve this application for the use of the facility. I'll second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Gensel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Bailow? Yes. Carrie? <clears throat> Item number five on our old business is our wireless tower. Uh, thank you, Mr. Advisor. Folks that have been around the last few meetings, um, we've been tossing around uh, this application for a wireless tower down by the uh, highway building. I have gotten together with Highway Superintendent Tlac this evening, um, and he agrees that this, there's a need for this tower, and uh, he gave us his opinion on um, the location of this tower, where he would like to see it down near his facility. Uh, last month, we had uh, referred this back down to the planning board for their review, um, considering our code does have uh, aspects of towers in there, uh, so we felt it should go down to the planning board for their approval. Well, um, the gentleman that's in charge of the type tower uh, company who would like to put this tower in said he'd like to get a signed contract before he starts doing his due diligence, ordering um, things that are needed for this application. Um, so we thought, well, we'd approve this contract. The supervisor signed this contract this evening, but uh, in the absence of our town attorney, uh, we'd like one more time to hear from him that um, this contract is uh, beneficial to the uh, town of Boston, the taxpayers. Um, he has reviewed it, um, so at this time I'd like to make a motion to table uh, the authorization of how we our, uh, super, our supervisor, Bale, I'm sorry, to uh, sign this contract until next month, Just make sure we have uh, all the pieces in place. Um, and we'll be meeting, um, well, hopefully, Don Carpenter will be meeting with Highway Superintendent TLEC in the near future to discuss this new location and then, uh, so that we're all on the same page. So I make a motion to uh, take. Second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Gunzel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Ballow? Yes. Harry. Item number two under old business is football press box. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Well, I've been working on the uh, design of the uh, football press box um, with the town engineer, Jim Hannon. Uh, we, we, took, we took what football wanted. Uh, we call it their, their wish list, I guess. And we um, took everything that they wanted and put it into a design and put it out for bid. Uh, we received two bids. Uh, from two contractors, uh, Trace and Development for $120,000 $120, and Pat White Construction for $78,000. Uh, unfortunately, this slides into a different category in our proc procurement procedure. Um, the town engineer was uh, thinking that this uh, building would be cost uh, quite a bit less. So um, what we need to do now is uh, make a motion to deny these bids and go back to the drawing board folks because I just don't think that uh, this is a reasonable uh, amount of money to spend uh, on this uh, press box uh, using taxpayers' money. I'd like to see uh, something uh, quite, quite a bit less costly. Um, so we're gonna do some uh, value engineering, go back to the drawing board, shrink it down, um, go to some stick frame, maybe one story instead of two story, and get this down uh, under the level that uh, we feel comfortable with spending taxpayers' dollars money to um, improve our parks. Uh, it's much needed. Um, football's been gracious enough to uh, be working out there under a tent, uh, I believe, for their announcements. And so I don't think uh, their season uh, will see a new press box this year. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion to um, refuse these bids. Uh, go back to the drawing board for some value engineering and uh, come back maybe next month with uh, a little uh, more uh, less expensive design. Second that. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Gunzel? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Dow? Yes. Okay. At this time, I'm going to open up the floor. It wasn't put on there, unfortunately. Sorry about that. But I open up the floor. Please come up, state your name, address, two minute time frame. Hardy Rolls at uh, E6741 Lever Road. 
It's been five years since my property marker disappeared. You folks all know about it because I sent you all a letter. And it happened when the highway department was digging a ditch. When's it going to be replaced? I have not a clue when it's going to be replaced. My guy said they did not remove your survey again. Oh, then somebody must have just come along after you folks did it and took it out, huh? I don't know what to tell you on that one. Well, other thing that then. Mr. Rowe, has it moved, we moved on one end, both ends, four corners? One is one. one. It's on the, the uphill side from, from my property. Uphill. Okay. Yes. And I've taken some pictures of uh, the problems that have been up there with the drainage. My driveway was washed quite a bit on the south end of the driveway. I notice all the pipes up the hill that were washed or fixed except mine. Is a problem with mine? Not at all. We just haven't got there yet. And, uh, if your mailbox is kind of right away, it sticks out. It's, uh, Wrong place. Needs. Wrong place. The lower end. Well, it needs to be fixed on the upper end, too. And that's right in the way, so. But no, we've, uh, we've got plenty of projects to do, and we haven't been up there to work on that. It's really not a priority right now. That's strange. You were just up there last week doing uh, other repairs. You just happen to stop when you come to my property line. How come? Like Am I doing something wrong? Not at all. I have no problem. It's just that it's not a real priority. If there's something on. Uh, well, I guess my best thing to do is go get Channel 2 to come down, huh? That'd be perfect. Yeah, it'd be perfect. You're right. And get my lawyer involved. Whatever you like. I would like to have my face fixed and my property pin put back. And it disappeared when you folks were doing the ditch work. I'll get the pin put back in for you. Thank you. I heard that before, sir. <clears throat> yes, Gary Vera, 6465 Kevinton Place, Boston, New York. Uh, just a couple questions I'm not quite clear with. Um, now, there's a proposed budget in a f that's been proposed. Yes. Okay. Is there any pay increases relating to any positions? Um, there's the proposed budget. I took all the worksheets that were provided. Um, put them, I put them in there as, um, as um, a wish list from each department head. Put it together. And um, had the opportunity to uh, go through it with Actually, Johnson and Keating was there, and, and myself, and Joshua Malecki, who edited our CPA form. <laughs> helping out with it, compiling everything. Um, so, there are some increases, some decreases. There are uh, some changes around uh, lines that we felt needed to put money in that we didn't have before. So, um, it is just a tentative budget at this point. Um, I am going to meet next week hopefully, uh, with department heads um, to go through with them and, and the following week um, I'm going to try and schedule a work session with the town board. Now, uh, just because uh, I've been hearing some kind of rumors, is there a wish list to make the supervisor a full-time position at 54000 a year? Not 54000 a year. I'll answer that. I, it, was, it was a question that was posed to me. I'll, I'll be honest with you, as I talked to Councilman Keating about it, because I know he's running for supervisor, and um, I thought about it, and um, I got back to Councilman Keating, discussed it thoroughly with him, how I felt, and what I thought about it. Um, he had some definite good points he brought to my attention, that um, the budget for the supervisor would be increased in that office. Um, I want to be fair to everybody and let everybody know that it wouldn't be the position of the um, supervisor's assistant in state part time. Uh, the supervisor going to call his full time position. Uh, after I thought about it, I had the opportunity to call Councilman McKeon, discuss it thoroughly on the phone with him, how I felt about it, um, the reason why I 
happened where it is. Um, I thought um, I owed that to him because he had a question to ask me, and I thought it was the proper thing to do. I've always been open and honest with every councilman that sat up here, and he's done too thoroughly about it, and I want to keep it right where it is. Um, and I'll um, explain to you, I've done it for eight years. I have a family, I have two businesses I run, and it's not that I didn't tell Mr. Keith that I wouldn't tell anybody else. Demands a lot, but I was able to do it, and I felt there uh, under my administration that um, I, that's what I was talking about. You see, so there's a possibility it could increase, uh, possibly yeah. with only one person running for the position. It's kind of ironic that it was proposed by the person, the only person running uh, in this election. So I was just kind of curious about that. And, and after, after. Uh, um, whoever gets in, whoever sits in these chairs, whoever does the job, um, has the ability to do that. As I finished the 2018 budget, um, I put it in what I felt comfortable um, in doing it. I presented it to all the board, the board members, um, and there was ability for anybody to do, switch anything, and do what they like in the 2019 budget, I guess. So in reality, there, is there an election this year? You know what, honestly, I, Mr. I, I don't keep up on it. I have so much on my hands. Yeah, so have you seen any signs or any, or is it just that there are, people have been handpicked for positions by the political bosses so nobody can possibly run in opposition? That's what it seems to look like to me. Correct, Mr. Keene, is that correct? I didn't handpick at all, Mr. Vera. You have just as much as an opportunity as I do. And in this, in this country, there's nothing that stops any person in this room, in this town, or in this country from not running for office. If you if you don't receive an endorsement, then you have the option for a write-in bail. Well, you are exactly correct. I was just kind of kind of curious because I know that the political leaders have bosses, I should call them, try to make sure they determine who sits in the five positions up here. I'm just just curious on that, so people are aware of that. Um, another question I have heard is the, now at one time they were talking about draining the ponds for fishing ponds, is that, is that a, still a priority? Not a priority at all. You, actually, if you took a look at the numbers in this year's budget and you looked at the finances lately, that's not in the budget. Oh, well, I thought it was something that you proposed. Well, there was a bid that was put out, but there's no contract signed, so there's actually no legal li uh, liability for the town to do that. It's something that's, and, and yeah, I guess I'll say it's, it's put on the back burner for now, but if you look at some of the other fees, all seen the legal fees that have come into this town for some of these. Oh, yeah, there's massive legal fees. I You're understand right there. And, um, let's see, was there any question? Amy, let's see, election. Okay, um, yeah, Mr. Munger, uh, now you did stop at my house when you a drainage problem, right? Now, where's, where's that up, up in space somewhere? Or? It is not. We are discussing it with the town attorney. We are discussing with the town attorney. That is correct. So all the people on Kevington that have that flooded basements on a yearly basis is you're still discussed with the town attorney. Yes, sir. Okay, I was kind of curious because how long did you stop by? Was that three months? Three months, months? ago. Yeah, it was a long time. Right. Yeah. I know that's part of your that's part of your umbrella, right? That is, sir. Is is the recreation is the tennis courts part of your umbrella too, or is that something else? Uh, as far as I am aware, no, sir. Yes, sir. Tennis courts. Well, the one that, the one that, I mean, sorry, the basketball court that was partially done, but never completed, I'm just curious, was that? Recreation, I think, is Councilman Broadway, but uh, oh, okay. I just, uh, unfortunately, uh, I, okay. I'll just, re reiterate what Mr. Keating said. We had uh, enormous um, okay. legal fees this year, so our legal fees. So I have a project that put on kind of a hold? We, well, some projects have been put on hold, right. some projects have not been put on hold. Uh, um, you know, we're going to try and finish up the, at least the fencing around this tennis court um, right. and get that get that done. Um, we have to, under the contract that was signed by the right. previous administration right. before me with New York State, we are we have to redo that. Okay, so technically, there's probably more legal, more lawsuits in effect now than there were two two years ago yeah. when I last sat here. Okay. okay, well, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>
Council member. Sure, I will start with a report from our town clerk. Uh, she has let me know that flu vaccinations will be available October 13th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Unfortunately, they are still... I'm sorry, I'm just grabbing something. Okay, sorry. Uh, we are still not a DEC licensed issuing agent. We received the test and passed. Still, we are waiting for our license. New York State recertification for pistol permits issued before January 15th, 2013. <laughs> need to be recertified, and the deadline for the recertification is January 31st, 2018. Recertification applications are available in the town clerk's office. She wishes all a happy Halloween. Don't worry about it. Um, on my table, um, I know we spoke about use of, uh, use of facility for the Boston Historical Society for two dates coming up. Uh, but there is one that has been previously approved uh, for October the 17th. Uh, it is for their fall potluck. It will be commencing at 6 o'clock uh, and 6.45 the speaker will uh, start. Uh, we are going to have Sandy Walters as a guest. Uh, and if you are not familiar with Sandy, who I assume most people in the room are, she is the head pharmacist down at CVS. Uh, and trust me, she has a lot of history within, within the town. Um, uh, so it's a dish to pass kind of event. We'd love to see some new faces that we don't normally see. Uh, if you haven't been previously, it's definitely worth a time to come out and just enjoy some fellowship with other members of the town. But this time, that's all I have, Mr. Thank Supervisor. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. <clears throat> First off, I'd like to congratulate the Supervisor on another excellent budget. Our last budget here did not raise taxes again. Excellent job, Mr. Supervisor. Um, my second order of business is um, months ago, folks, we hired a company, Digits LLC, to do a forensic audit of the clerk's office after the resignation to make sure everything was up to snuff.